Welcome back to the CNET stage at CES 2017. I'm Brian Tong and with me is the handsome David Katzmeyer. Have you been introduced like that before? Always. See, okay. Well, I insist that's part of my contract. They, they wrote that in the actual prompter. Okay. He is uh, reviews TVs and among other things has obviously been super busy this entire week. And what we're here for, we're talking TV shows and really we want to talk about what you love. You and I exchange, basically sat in a booth for two hours and talked about exactly this, so they're like, hey, why don't we just put these two guys and talk about the same exact thing? Yeah, yeah, the Sony booth, it's just crawling with new TV technology. We were there, you know, shooting videos, making, uh, making it happen on the opening day, but yeah, it was fun. Now, the day one, the keynote, I felt like LG basically threw down the hammer and was like, you know what, CS 2017, first keynote, boom. This is the most sensational product you might see here at the show. Talk to us about it and what makes at least that special and why maybe we should care. So this is the wallpaper television we're talking about. It's the W7. It's their first uh, TV that is 3.5, no, 3.8 millimeters thin, so like about that thin. And that you put that up on the wall and it basically blends completely in the wall. You can see the video here. The coolest part about this, like I've been reviewing TVs for a while. And I'm always like, oh, another thin TV. Oh, what, what are you going to do? It's like, okay, fine. It's a thin TV. But you, you put them on the wall. They're like that. You know, they're 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 sticking out a little bit. This, once it's completely part of the wall, it kind of blew my mind. Now, I had seen this thing on a trip to Korea a couple years ago in concept form. Guy hands me this sheet, basically like a thing of cellophane, black thing, like flopping around. And he's like, we're going to make this into a television. And I'm holding it like, what are you going to do? There's like this ribbon dangling from the bottom of it. <laughs> How do you plug anything into it? So what they did is they just basically created the sound bar, you know, that, that got all the, the HDMI and everything connected to it. There's a little ribbon cable that runs up, you can see right there, runs up through the wall, and that supplies the power and the HDMI. So they solved that problem. Of course, you have to use the sound bar. Um, you know, it's an $8,000 television. Actually, they, they just, the pricing just kind of leaked on Best Buy. So, LG wouldn't tell us until now. We went, you know, did a little Google search, found out that thing is actually available for pre-order now for the 65-inch wow. size, eight grand. Oh, it's eight grand. See, yes. I, we were we were trying to guess. Uh, is it going to be like maybe ten grand somewhere mm -hmm. around there? So eight grand is what yep. they're going to start yep. it off. So now it's it's eight thousand. That means their other OLEDs, which by the way have the best pitch quality we've ever tested, and by the way. yeah, amazing televisions. Those guys, they have four of them this year. Step down series. Those are going to be progressively less expensive. My hope is that the cheapest one, which LG says has the exact same picture quality as all the more expensive ones, meaning you know that's the one you want to buy. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that things like maybe 2,500 for 65 inch come holiday season, that's, that's maybe two crazy. grand if we get really lucky. So that's kind of the most exciting thing that I've seen at the show. And also, for those of you that don't even know what we're talking about, all I can tell you is I we implore you to go to LG's booth uh, when you're here at the show and look for this. You can just ask where. Well, you won't even have to ask. You'll see they're it. They're everywhere. You're, yeah, you'll yeah. see it, and it's their wallpaper TV. And really, yeah. it's I haven't seen anything like you said that's kind of blown our mind from the TV space until then, after all these years, and you've seen so many TVs. Well, the thing about CES, it's all concept stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of mind-blowing stuff here, but you're never going to be able to yeah. buy it. And, and again, it's for available for pre-order today, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, it's OLED, and they can do some really amazing things with organic light-emitting diodes. Obviously, they give you perfect black level, viewing angle is great. It's a lot like plasma used to be, but even better. Uh, and super, super, super thin. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time you've seen that really thin application differentiate itself from what you can do with LCD. And I, don't, I, I do want to keep on talking about this for one second because when you and I have been talking about this, you told me that they literally had to make the TV thicker than they needed to really to create some sort of a frame so they that would allow it to be shipped it. Yeah, and yeah. sold, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure when I open the box of the review sample, it's going to be, you know, the styrofoam's going to be like, you know, the little thing <laughs> and maybe like gingerly pull it out of there. But yeah, they had to stiffen it and basically just, you know, put some plastic on that floppy, you know, uh, OLED element that I described before uh, to make it, you know, something that you can sell. And, and it, it, it does, the bottom of the, of the frame that comes with it is, is a magnet. The top is basically screws, so it's a standard, you know, wall mount, 18 pounds. You could put it on, you don't have to worry about studs or anything like it. You put it on drywall, then forget about it. So even, even you could lift it up on the wall, man. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't you know. know, I need a friend. <laughs> they, they probably tell you to use two or three people just for, you know, uh, to cover their, their ass with the lawyers. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing television. Awesome. Uh, what other stuff stuck out to you? I mean, you are our TV guru, so. Yeah, so we were in the Sony booth, you and I, and yes. we, we saw the press conference, and it had been rumored, but now, yes, Sony is also making an OLED television. So. They're using LG Display's panel. You know, LG Display, back in Korea, they're the only ones that can make these large format OLED uh, things and, and not you know, throw away 90% of them. But 
they're uh, finally selling now to Sony, and, and Sony is marketing that TV in the United States. So you're going to have competition for the first time between LG and Sony uh, with this new uh, technology, OLED. And you know, from what I've seen, it's a really good looking television. We did some, some, some demos. It's impossible to say which one's better, or even more importantly, whether the Sony one, if it is better, will not be too expensive to be worthwhile for most people. Um, Sony hasn't talked about pricing yet, but that's going to be available in the 55, 65, and 77 inch size again. And Sony did something really cool. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, do you see that, 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 the, the sound that, that, thing? That little, I, if we have the video playing up, and there's probably yep. moments where you can see it, but on the rear side, you'll see this, this bar. I think we're starting to get to it. But it, it yeah, stretches from one it. side on the back. It's, it's a black bar. And those are actually like transducers that vibrate the screen, right? You want to talk about the acoustic it's, service it's and bizarre, all that? It's yeah. bizarre, yeah. So, right. so, and again, I saw this earlier at the LG, D, the LG Display booth, which is a private booth over here. And they, they walked me over like, this is the coolest thing we have. And they <laughs> handed me this little like, thing that looked like a, 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 a watch battery almost, bigger. And they're like, this vibrates the screen of the OLED TV to create sound. And I'm like, OK, uh, <laughs> you know, does it make the picture wobble? That was my first question. I'm like, no, no, so I did a little demo. And you can even see the stuff is bouncing around on, the, on this. You, you feel the screen, and it's got you know, actual vibrations. The point is supposed to be that it, you know, it, it removes the issue of voices coming from a speaker above and below. If you have a center channel from either side, it localizes like somebody's talking on the screen. The sound comes right out of their mouth. Of oh, the middle of the screen. Yeah. Screen, right? I mean, I did a demo, whatever. I mean, that's not a huge deal. The, the, the best thing about it is, I guess, that it hides the speakers. But again, if you're paying this kind of money, yeah. we always say invest in a decent speaker yeah. system because you know, the speakers building the TV are one thing. But you're going to get so much better experience if you spend a few hundred dollars and, and get a surround sound or even a good sound bar uh, with something like this. So it, it's, it's a differentiator for Sony. And it's a cool design. You can see it's got this kind of angled back. That, that cloth looking thing is actually yeah. a subwoofer. Exactly. So they, they try to do something with the sound on it. And, and they have you know, a nice design. But we'll see what happens when it compares to LG. And more importantly, how much Sony wants to charge. Yeah, that, that's the question that we all have. I mean, are, are any of you guys and gals out there right now, are you even in the market for a TV? Or are you just coming here to kind of Google, Google and Google at that stuff. In the market? Nice. Excellent, yeah. So, I, so we, he's we waiting for OLED prices to fall, right? That's basically what, yeah, everybody, everybody. I mean, and, that's, that's, and that's really what's happening. Yeah. You know, it's, it's already starting to happen. Yeah. Uh, even LG's current o, OLEDs this holiday season, right? All of a sudden there was like this 40% discount drop that came yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, they were four grand and all of a sudden they're three. And then they ran a, like a thing where they were 2800. And this is talking about the 65 inch again. So 6500 TV. 65 inch TV for 2,800 bucks is, you know, it's it's in some people's wheelhouse. You can make yep. that argument, yep. you know, the other people that have a stake in, in your in your home. So, you know, and I think next year you, you mean translation significant other. Yes. Like we yeah. we can. Those, we those are discussions that need to be you know had at a certain point. Um, you know, and and that's where it's really interesting because you know you turn to Samsung. And that's LG's principal competitor. By the way, if anybody doesn't know, Samsung is still by far the number one TV manufacturer in the world. Um, and they sell, you know, exclusively LCD-based televisions, which is not OLED. They didn't, you know, they came with an OLED a few years ago, but they're they're concentrating on LCD. Their innovation this year is QLED, yeah. um, which, you know, by the way, is still an LCD. Well, thing. that's what I was going to ask, right? They're yeah. using, and we have it here for you guys to watch on screen. They're touting this QLED technology, but. You are saying it's actually LCD technology with, with kind of you know with their own twist and their own name to it, right? Yeah, yeah. So last year was Sahud or S U H D. If I remember <laughs> that one. Yeah. See, I, too, that's too much insight. Right? Yeah. Super. What is it? Super ultra, ultra high definition. High definition. <laughs> and that got thrown out with the bathwater. <laughs> um, but now they have Q L E D, which stands for quantum uh, something uh, L E D. So it, 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 light emitting diode. The point is they have a quantum dot layer mm -hmm. uh, that they just had the same one they had last year. They've improved the quantum dot layer, so now they have uh, better light output because quantum dots help improve the efficiency of the backlight. And they also improve the color, so they have a wider color gamut. Probably a very, very good looking television. Samsung says it's their best LCD television. Whether it's better than OLED is a really tough you know, row to hoe, yeah. especially because at the high end, they got rid of full array local dimming on their sets, and now they're all edge lit. So long story short, uh, Samsung has, a, has some tough competition. Um, and that's the high end of the TV market where OLED has been really, really getting share. Samsung's advantage and LCD's advantage is that the large, very large screen sizes mm -hmm. uh, you know, are only available in LCD. So if you want something bigger than a 65. 75, 85, you want to go large, dudes, right? Yeah. And, and I'm you have one of those dudes. You know, I want to be one of those dudes, but well, I'm not one of those dudes yet. You, you could be, because <laughs> the thing is they're so, they're so much inexpensive now. I mean, the, the prices on 70-inch TVs, the 75-inch TVs are just going down. 85-inch TVs are available now, and they're not going to, I mean, they're, they're, they're still super expensive, but 
my point is, OLED is only 65. So it, 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 you got some people are already asking me, like, you know, is it better to go to a 70 inch, you know, blah blah blah, or a, or a 65 inch OLED? Depends on how close you're sitting, your, you know, how how uh, you know how big your room is, that sort of thing. But um, you know, so that's where LCD at the high end is really still going to be the, the choice. Do you do you know when we'll even see larger than 65 OLED, or they're they're a little apprehensive about that? Well, just right for now, consistency. Yeah. That, so the issue now is they do make 77 inch OLEDs, but the problem is that they don't have the yield. They don't have that we talked about before, throwing away 90 percent of the panels. The, it's still an issue to get the yield up. So they're extremely exp the, the LG's 77 inch OLED is 20 grand right now. Yeah, you can buy one. <laughs> You um, can buy one too. Right, I can too. I'll, I can buy ten. <laughs> For sure. Right. Um, so those uh, that that price they tell me is probably not going to come down this year. They're going to continue selling. Even Sony has a seventy-seven inch you know model in line, but that's not going to help anybody. You know. So it's a question of when they can get that seventy-seven inch size. They're saying that you know it's still a work in progress to be able to to compete with the very large screen LCDs. And then you know we talk about size. Everyone wants the biggest and baddest screen, but we saw really. One of the coolest things that can help you accomplish that with really without a traditional screen, right? This yep. is a Sony's 4K HDR throw short throw projector. Yeah. Uh, this, it, it's not necessarily affordable to everyone. You can't buy it, but this was pretty mind-boggling when we went to go see that demo. Yeah. So I mean, and and that's kind of a, a you, you talk about these very large 85-inch TVs. <coughs> Sorry. This is basically. It's CS day two. Yeah. You're gonna make the, <laughs> make, make it through. Day two? What? <laughs> I saw a guy um, sleeping with a bag over his head on a chair. <laughs> that <Stay> was me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a 100-inch projector screen, basically. And it, 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 it's basically a TV because it's 2,500 nits. That's very bright. It, you, you, most projectors, you think you've got to have a dark room. You, gotta, you can't walk in front of the lens. It's, it's a whole dedicated home theater thing. And those look spectacular when you turn the lights down. But you want a television. You can watch. Anybody can watch any time. So yeah, this, I just want to really quickly show here people that are watching. Yeah. This is, think of this as like a box that sits against your wall. You could put it in a built-in cabinet and it shoots that image onto your wall. Uh, you know, it's not, it's nothing traditional. So when you look at these images, you're like, well, where's this coming from? It's that rectangular box that you see right there. Yeah, and, and the, the, the thing, I mean, it's 25 grand. One reason, it's really, really bright. Another reason, it's 4K resolution. It's HDR compatible. Not going to have the kind of HDR performance of an OLED, but it's 100 inches and 120 inches, depending on how large of a screen you want to put on it. Interestingly, uh, Hisense, a Chinese manufacturer um, that's been making inroads on, on the budget end uh, in the United States, they uh, announced another product that's very similar. 4K, HDR, really high uh, light output, includes the screen and a 5.1 surround system, because why not? That's 13 grand. So this type of technology is, is a pretty cool alternative if you're that guy that's like, you know what, 85 just not big enough. I, I want to go. I wanna, <laughs> you know, you got to go, gotta go larger. Yeah, might as well. But that Sony's a pretty, pretty beautiful looking piece. If you can and then it. also, like at CES, we like, a lot of companies like to show off the biggest, the baddest, the best. Yep. And I don't know about you, at least from the most visually impressive screen that we saw, was the Cletus demo from Sony. Cletus? Come on, Cletus. It's the Cletus demo. Cletus, C-L-E-D-I-S. -E uh, stands for Crystal LED Integrated System. Um, I got a chance to, you How know, did you, nice. Did you, yeah. Dude, that's pretty good. Thanks. Do you want me to say that I five times fast? I didn't know that. Crystal, L oh, Crystal, we'll see it. I know something that Katzmeyer doesn't know. This is, what type <laughs> of world good. are we living that's in? That's good, you know Cletus. Yeah, so um, this, this display here, you can find it in Sony's booth. It's basically a wall, but what makes it special is it's 144 little modules. They're about 16 by 18 inches. They're crystal LED modules. They're all stacked together. They kind of call it like the Legos of TV sets. But when you look at this, you can tell, even from this video, there are no seams on it whatsoever. Obviously, this is something that you could use for you know, industrial use. I'm sure we'll see this at future CESs yeah, yeah, yeah. and other booths, uh, sporting events. But that's a 32 by 9 foot screen, 8K by 2K. Uh, just ridiculous. And it's bright. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like a lot of these things, it's like they have these big bulbs, the resolution's not there. This thing looks like a TV that's 32 feet long. It's crazy. So it's one of those things that you definitely want to go and check out. Yeah. And uh, good for CES. the good thing is also it's not a prototype. I mean, it's going to be available in production in summer, they said. Yep. Um, and it's just up to these companies that want to use it. You can build different types of shapes if you want to, support it with different types of videos. Uh, it, it's really cool though. Yeah, it's very nice. So um, as we kind of keep on talking about television sets, 
I guess, you know, we, sh we talked about the, the hot stuff and what stuff everyone should look at, and not everyone's like, well, I'm going to buy that wallpaper TV like most of us aren't. Right. But what about someone who's in the market? Because you and I were like, I have a plasma TV. I have a Panasonic plasma TV. Still do. Based on your recommendation, which I still love, right? right. Nice but TV. you and I are kind of in that spot, like, what will be the next TV? Yeah. So where are you at with all that? Well, I mean, personally, uh, you know, I, I'm still rocking a Panasonic Plasma 2, 65-inch. I don't know how uh, long, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue doing that. But, you know, it, it's it's a tough now because if you want a really good, you know, the highest quality television, OLED, I think, is the way to go. And but, you know, if if you know, you don't want to pay twenty hundred dollars, sixty-five inch TV. I mean, there's some really good TVs out there available sometimes for half that mm -hmm. or for you know two grand or whatever. And they're superb televisions. So you know, the LED LCDs out there. Uh, we gave some really good reviews of Vizio last year um, for those affordable televisions. Uh, this year we talk about Hisense and TCL. Both those guys are really trying to eat Vizio's lunch this year, and they're putting out televisions with full array local dimming, which is a technology that allows you know, really good picture quality and LCD TVs. These are lesser known brands, but they really want to get share, so they're really relatively inexpensive for these televisions. Uh, TCL's coming out with the full array local dimming Roku TV, which is awesome, by the way. The Roku operating system is yes, great. Yes, yes. For 500 bucks for a 50-inch model wow. that has, you know, really good, and it also has Dolby Vision HDR, by the way. So, <laughs> you know, it's got all these things that the high-end TV manufacturers put in their TVs for a lot less, and that's kind of why we've loved Vizio recently. Um, Vizio didn't announce anything to show, by the way. They were recently acquired by Le Echo, uh, which is another Chinese brand. So some, some stuff shuffling around there. We're going to see what they come up with for 2017. But those, those TVs are really recommendable, but it's hard for me to say, you know what, don't just wait. You know, if, if your TV is, is good enough now, yeah. waiting for OLED prices to fall, maybe you know, holiday season 2017 uh, might be the way to go. Okay, well, you know what? Now also, just write the discount. What about, oh, you know, one quick thing. What about, don't TV prices, do they tend to drop around Super Bowl time? Is that, is that a thing? Uh, right? it, it depends. That's a thing, right? Yeah, so, I mean, often you'll find the lowest prices around uh, Black Friday, but, you know, when, when, when TV make, or when the, the retailers want to get rid of their inventory to make room for the new stuff that we've all seen, uh, you know, that's why CES is when it is. Um, they go ahead and, and, and liquidate them, you know, so the Super Bowl sales are, are, are going to be coming around soon. And, you know, you'll see some really good prices on there. The problem is, if you've waited this long, often the TV that you want might be rare enough that they don't have to put it on sale or whatever. So uh, you could get really lucky, get some good 2016 stuff. That's why it's nice. Go to CNET, check out our reports of what's out now. Then you can decide, well, do I want to wait for this newfangled new technology or is the, you know, last year's model good enough? I heard CNET's a pretty good site to go check out. I mean, I, I you know what? I kind of go there pretty often. Yeah. I know. I do too. All right. Hey, thanks so much, David. We've got more good stuff to come next up. Lego is, is in the house. Stay with us.